Israel's alleged targeting of journalists is not its only form of media suppression in Palestine. Al Jazeera has long come under criticism from Israel for its reporting inside Gaza and the West Bank. This is because it's funded by the government of Qatar. For its part, Al Jazeera says operations are totally independent and, you know, its coverage does seem to reflect that claim. Maybe even a bit too independent for some because US Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited Qatar on the 13th of October. There he met with Qatar's emir and prime minister. Qatar has been playing a key role in negotiating with Hamas for the release of Israeli hostages. So no doubt there was a lot to discuss. But according to US news website Axios, negotiations weren't the only topic of discussion. According to sources, Blinken says that he asked the Prime Minister of Qatar to rein in Al Jazeera's coverage of the war. Axios goes on to report this. Blinken told American Jewish leaders on Monday that when he was in Doha on October 13th, he asked the Qatari government to change its public posture towards Hamas, three people who attended the meeting said. According to the three attendees, Blinken said he gave toning down Al Jazeera coverage of the war in Gaza as an example of steps the Qatari government can take to do this. Blinken said he asked the Qataris to turn down the volume on Al Jazeera's coverage because it is full of anti-Israel incitement, according to one source. Blinken didn't give any examples of the heightened rhetoric he asked to be dialed back. Now, neither Al Jazeera, the Qatari government, nor the US government have responded to requests for comment from Axios. But if true, that story reveals how seriously Israel and its allies are taking the information war. And it also suggests the US is keen to shield a larger audience across the Middle East from the picture emerging inside Gaza, fearing rising tensions in the regions. At the same time, Israel has been seeking to shut down Al Jazeera within its own borders. Shlomo Kahi is Israel's communications minister. According to high-profile Israeli paper Haaretz, in the days after the 7th of October Hamas attack, Shlomo said that he wanted to push through legislation that would shut down Al Jazeera in Israel. That intention became a terrifying reality last Friday. The Israeli government has now approved emergency rules that would allow it to shut down Al Jazeera. The Times of Israel reports the proposal is to close Al Jazeera in Israel and it will be brought to the next meeting of the security cabinet. When announcing the new legislation, Kahi said this. Israel is at war on land, in the air, at sea and on the public diplomacy front. We will not allow in any way broadcasts that harm the security of the state. Al Jazeera's broadcasts and reports constitute incitement against Israel, help Hamas, ISIS and the terror organisations with their propaganda and encourage violence against Israel. Kahi's office told the Times of Israel that the intention to shut down Al Jazeera in Israel was based on this. Proof that is assisting the enemy, broadcasting propaganda in service of Hamas in Arabic and English to viewers around the world and even passing sensitive information to the enemy. Al Jazeera denies these claims. It's not the first time Israel has tried to ban Al Jazeera. In 2017, Netanyahu's then government tried to close its Jerusalem office after accusing its journalists of inciting violence. The context of that threat was a clash between Israel and Palestine over the Alaska Mosque in Jerusalem. And in the 2021 Israel-Palestine conflict, this happened. That was the Al Yala Tower in Gaza City. It housed Al Jazeera's offices as well as those of the Associated Press. And it was levelled by an Israeli strike after the IDF alleged it was being used by Hamas militants. Journalists working there denied this and no evidence for the assertion has ever been presented by Israel. Too late though, because workers inside the building were reportedly given 10 minutes to evacuate before it was crushed. What I want to know is, Michael... I get why Israel is trying to shut down Al Jazeera because it doesn't want any information getting out. But why is the US trying to interfere with press freedom in the region? Because the US is the staunchest ally of Israel in the world and always 
has been is, is the US that protects Israel in the UN by vetoing anything on the Security Council that might condemn Israeli actions, which are clearly against international law, such as expanding settlements. And it's America, which is which is shielding them diplomatically. I don't know if we are in a position to say that, you know, Al Jazeera is completely independent of the Qatari government. Like, I, I would not be surprised if there was some pressure from the Qatari government to Al Jazeera as to, to what sort of images and messages they should I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. But I think what what I do know is that the common sense of the Western media is so far out of whack from what most people think um, in the global south, in the Arab world, that Al Jazeera is just a very important correction to that. Even if it does have some biases, it's a, it's a it's an important correction to the biases that our media have. Now, what are those bias, biases? Now. There are lots of them, but I would say the key ones here, when it comes to this 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 current conflict or the current um, you know heightening of this conflict, is this idea that Hamas are ISIS, that Hamas are some sort of wild, deaf cult, terrorist organisation that don't have any political aims um, beyond killing people um, that can't possibly be negotiated with because they're so irrational and um, sort of devilish, um, and that you know Israel has no option but to destroy them. Now, I don't think many people at all in the Arab world think that, right? Most people um, outside of the West, in fact, I think see, you know, some people will see Hamas as this sort of ISIS-like terrorist organization, but I think most will see it as, you know, a liberation movement, um, a nationalist Islamist organization, um, and, you know, to one degree or another, people will will accept that it has committed some pretty atrocious acts when it comes to, to killing civilians. Of course, I think, you know, the, the, the killing civilians, targeting civilians, is wrong, but I don't think Hamas is anything like ISIS. And it's very much an ideological construction by Israel to try and justify the complete flattening of Gaza. I don't think much of the world is buying that. Um, Al Jazeera isn't really buying that. They're not demonstrating that kind of idea or they're not projecting that kind of idea. And that's a real problem for the US because the USA and Israel, they need this to be common sense, right? If, if they were to allow this sort of argument, this debate about whether or not Hamas or ISIS, they would probably lose. But what they have to do is just keep repeating it so, so often, so often, make sure that anyone who who suggests otherwise is instantly demonized, is instantly shamed, is instantly threatened with their jobs, right? You, you have to have this, this shield whereby no one is allowed to dissent from this line. Al Jazeera is dissenting from that line, as is pretty much you know, probably the global majority, right? And and that's very uncomfortable for for the United States. Now, I mean, Qatar is a is a powerful country. They've got huge gas reserves. I'm not sure how much they are going to be kowtowed um, by the United States in a situation like this. But that's clearly why the United States are trying to do it. I suppose the other thing here is, you know, the reporting of Al Jazeera does have international consequences. So it was um, the bombing of, of the hospital. I think it was partly sort of the, the coverage that Al Jazeera gave of that that meant that all these Arab leaders pulled out of it. And it's a real player in this conflict. And I'm glad it's a player in this conflict because I think one of the reasons why Palestinians have been able to be marginalized in the past is because there weren't sort of counterweights to the incredibly biased Western media. Now, as I say, Al Jazeera might be biased, but that is, if anything, that's just a counterweight and a really, really important one. And so I think the idea that it it, it should be um, shut down or policed by the Americans is somewhat disturbing. I mean, also, it's important that we don't separate this story from the fact that Israel is actively killing um, the families of journalists and journalists in, in, in Gaza. So this is not just um, threats. This is not just a sort of regulatory changes that make it harder for someone to report from um, Israel. It is a, a violent threat, which which the Israelis are sort of putting towards journalists who dare to cover the region in a way which is different from the lines which are being put out by by Israel and which they essentially want anyone to be to be punished um, for deviating from.